remembering. Do you hear my little red? Hold me softly, the cold grows. I remember. I was hugely black and hopeful. I bounce on eight legs along the mountains in the new warm. Sing the changer, sing the stranger. Will the changes change forever? Now, oh, all my hums have words now. Another change. And eagerly I bound on sunward, following the tiny thrill in the air. The forests have been shrinking again, and then I see. It's me, me, myself, Mogadid. I have grown bigger, more in the winter cold. I astonish myself, Mogadid. Excitement, enticement, shrilling from the sun side of the world I come. The sun is changing again, too. The sun is walking in the night. The sun is walking back to summer and the warming of the light. Warm is me, Mogadid. Forget the bad time winter. Memory quakes me. The old one, I stop, pluck up a tree. So much I wanted to ask the old one, but no time in the cold. Trees go end over end. I watch the fat climbers tumble out, not hungry. The old one warned me of the cold. I didn't believe him. I moved on, grieving. Old one told me, the cold, the cold will hold you. Chill cold. Kill cold. In the cold, I killed you. But it's warm now. All different. I'm Mogadid again. I smash trees. I uproot rocks. I tear the ravine open. Oh, where are you hiding? Suddenly, I have a new fear. Has my wild search harmed you? I force myself calm. I begin questing, circling ever wider over the trees, moving the clouds silent, thrusting my eyes and ears down into every glade, a new humming fills my throat, hunting, hunting for you. Once I glimpse a black bigness far away, and I am suddenly up at my full height, roaring, attack the black, was it another of my brothers. I would slay him, but the stranger is already vanishing, and I roar again. No, it roars at me. The new power of black. Yet deep inside myself, Mogadi is watching, fearing, attacking the black. Even in the warm, is there no safety? Are we truly like the fat climbers? But at the same time, it feels... Oh, right. Oh, good. Sweet is the plan. I give myself up to seeking you, my new song of longing. And you answered. You. So tiny, you. Hidden. Under a leaf, shrilling, lee, lee, lee. trilling, thrilling, half mocking, already imperious. Oh, how I whirl, crash, try to look under my feet, stop frozen in horror of squashing the lily lee. Rocking, longing, moaning, Mogadi. And you came out. You did, my adorable fire might. And when I see your little legs, hunting claws, upraise my whole guts melt, it bloods me. I am tender jelly, tender, oh, tender fierce like a mother, I think. Isn't that how a mother feels? My jaws are sluicing juice. That isn't hunger juice. I'm choking with fear of frightening you, of bruising your tininess. 
and I ache to grip, to need you. Oh, the power of red. The old one said it. Now I feel my special hands, my tender hands I always carry hidden. And now they come swelling out, and I push forward. My secret hands begin to knead and roll the stuff that's dripping from my jaws. Ah, that arouses you too, my redling, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, I feel torment. I feel your sly excitement. How your body remembers even now our love dawn, our very first moments of Mogadid and Lily. Before I knew you, yourself, before you knew me, it began then. My heart lit, our love knowing began that very first instant when your Mogadid stared down at you like a monster, bursting. I saw how new you were, how helpless. Yes, even while I loomed over you marveling, even while my secret hands drew and spun your fate, even then it came to me in pity that long ago, last year, when I was a child, I saw other little red ones among my brothers before our mother drove them away. I was only a foolish baby then. I didn't understand. I thought they'd grown strange and silly in their redness. And mother did well to turn them out. A stupid mokati. And now I saw you, my family. I understood. You were only that day cast out by our mother. Never had you left the terrors of night alone in the world. You couldn't imagine that such a monster as Frim was hunting you. Oh, Ruby, nestling, my baby red. Never I vowed, never I would leave you, and have I not kept my word? Never, Mogadid, I would be your mother. Great is the plan, but I was greater. All I learned of hunting in my lonely year, to drift like the air, to leap, to grip so delicately, all these learnings became for you. Not to bruise the smallest portion of your bright body, oh yes. I captured you whole in all your tiny perfection. Though you sizzled and spat and fought me like the sun spark you are. And then, and then, I began to, oh terror, delight, shame. How can I speak such a beautiful secret? The plan took me as a mother guides her child. And with my special hands, I began to... I began to bind you up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My special hands that had no use, now all unfurled and engorged and alive, never stopping the working and the strong juice of my jaws. They began to bind you, passing over and around and beneath you every moment piercing me with fear and joy. I wound among you, darling little limbs, into your inmost delicate recesses, gently swathing and soothing you, winding and binding until you became a shining jewel. But you responded, I know that now, we know, oh yes, in your fierce struggle, Shyly you helped me, always at the inn and each strand fell sweetly into place, winding you, binding you, loving Leilali. How our bodies moved in our first weaving song. I feel it even now, and I melt. And how I wove the silk about you, tying each tiny limb, making you perfectly helpless. How fearlessly you gazed up at me, you terrifying captor, you. You were never frightened, as I'm not frightened now. Isn't it strange, my lovely, the sweetness that floods our bodies when we yield to the plan? Great is the plan, 
fear it, fight it, but hold the sweetness yet. Sweetly began our love time when first I became your new true mother. Never cast you out. How I fed you and caressed you and tended. What a responsibility it is to be a mother. And anxiously I carried you Furled in my secret arms, savagely I drove off all intruders, even the harmless bandlings in the grass, in fear every moment that you were stifled or crushed. And all the warming nights long, how I cared for your helpless little body, carefully releasing each infant limb, flexing and stretching it, cleaning every scarlet morsel of you with my giant nibbling your baby claws with my terrible teeth, reveling in your baby hum, pretending to devour you while you shrieked with glee. Lee, lee, lee. But the greatest joy of all, we spoke. We spoke together. We too. We communed. We shared. We poured ourselves one into the other love. How we stammered and stumbled at the first, you and your strange mother tongue and I and I. How we blended our singing wordlessly and then with words until more and more we came to see each other's eyes, to hear, to taste, to feel the world of each other until I became Lila Lee and you became Mogadi until I finally became together a new thing. Oh, love, are we the first? Have others loved with their whole selves? Oh, sad thinking that lovers before us have left no trace. Remember us? Will you remember? My adored, though Mogadi has spoiled everything in the cold grows, if only I could hear you speak once more, my red, my innocent one. You are remembering. Your body tells me you remember me even now. Softly hold me softly, yet hear your Mogadi. You told me how it was being you, yourself, tiny redling of your mother, of your dreams, your baby joys and fears, and I told you mine. And all my learnings in the world since the day when my own mother, on the last day of my childhood, my mother called us under her. My brothers came in slowly, fearfully, from the summer green. But I small, I climb, eagerly up under the great arch of her body, seeking the golden mother fur, right in her arm, her warm cave I come. Where her mother eyes are glowing In the cave that sheltered us so strongly all our lives As I shelter you, my dawn flower I long to touch her To hear her speak, to sing to us again Her mother fur It troubled me It is tatters and drab And shyly I pressed against one of our huge food glands It feels dry But a slow spark Deep in her mother eye. Mother, it is me, Mogadi. Sons! Her voice rumbles through her armor. My big brother huddled by a leg, peering back at the sunlight. They look so funny, shedding half gold, half black. I'm afraid, whimpered my brother Frim nearby, like me. Friend still has his gold baby fur. Mother is speaking again, but her voice booms, so I can hardly understand. Winter! After the warm comes the cold winter. The cold winter before the warm comes again. Friend whimpers louder. I cuff him. What's wrong? Why is her loving voice so hoarse and strange now. She always hummed to us so tenderly. We nestled in her warm mother fur, 
sucking the lovely mother juices, rocking to her steady walking song. Imali, Imali. While far below the earth rolled by, oh yes, how we held our breaths, squealed when she began her mighty hunting hum. How we clung in the thrilling climax when she plunged upon her prey. And we heard the crunching, the tearing, the gurgling in her body that meant soon her food glands would be richly full. And suddenly I see a black streak down below. A big brother is running away, and mother's booming voice breaks off. Her great body tenses, her plates crash, and mother roars, running, screaming down below. I burrow up into her fur. And I'm flung about as she leaps. Out! Go out! Her terrible hunting limbs. They crash down. She roars without words, shuddering, jolting. And when I dare to peek out, I see the others have all fled. All except one. A black body is lying on their mother's claws. It's my brother, Sesso. My mother is tearing him, is eating him. I watch in horror. Sesso, she cared for so proudly, so tenderly, and I sob, bury my head in her fur. But the beautiful fur is coming loose in my hands. Her golden mother fur is dying. I cling desperately. Trying not to hear the crunches, the gulps, the gurgling. The world is ending. All is terrible, terrible. And yet my fire buried. Even then, I almost understood. Great is the plan. Presently, mother stops feeding and begins to move. The rocky ground jolts by far below. Her stride is not much soothing, but it jerks me. Even her deep hum is strange. On, on, alone, ever alone, on. The rumbling ceases, silence. Mother is resting. Mother, mother, it's me. I'm here. Go, go. It's too late. Mother, no. Leave you? Why must I go? Speak to me. It's too late. Now I see one huge mother eye glowing faintly, but she only makes a grating sound. The winter, I say. I did speak before the winter. Go, go. Another groan, a cough, nearly shakes me from my perch. But when she speaks again, her voice sounds gentler. Tall, you are a strange son. You talk like your father. What's that, mother? What's a father? Always talk. The winter. Oh yeah, so I did. Late winter, I spoke you. It gets cold, but no more. Too late. Outside, I hear her armor rattle and clank. <laughs> Mother, speak to me. Go, go. Her belly plate clashes around me. I jump for another nest of fur, but it comes loose in my grip. Wailing, I save myself by hanging on to one of her great walking limbs. It is rigid, thrumming like a rock. Go! Her mother eyes are shriveling, dead. I panic, scramble down. Everything is vibrating, resonating around me. Mother is holding back a storm. I leap for the ground. 
I rush diving into a crevice. I wiggle and burrow under the fearful bellowing and clanging that rains on me from above. Into the rocks I go with the hunting claw of mother crashing behind me. Oh, Redling, my little tenderling, never have you known such a night. Those dreadful hours hiding from the monster that had been my loving mother. I saw her once more, yes. When dawn came, I clambered up a ledge and peered through the mist. It was warm then. The mists were warm. I knew what mother looked like. We had glimpses of her huge horned dark shapes before our own mother hooted under us. Oh, yeah. Then would come Mother's earth-shaking challenge and the strange Mother's answering roar. And we'd cling tight, feeling her surge of kill fury, buffeted, deafened, battered, while our Mother charged and struck. And once while our Mother fed, I peeped out and saw a strange baby squealing in the remnants on the ground below. But now it was only my dear Mother I saw lurching away through the mists, the great rusty gray hulk so horned and vast that only her hunting eyes showed above her armor, swiveling, mindlessly, questioning. She crashed away across the mountains, and she went and thrummed the new harsh song, and I never saw her again. When the sun rose, I saw the gold fur was peeling from my shiny black. All by itself, my hunting limb flashed out and knocked a hopper right into my jaws. You see, my berry, how much larger and stronger I was than you when Mother sent us away. That is also the plan. But all these learnings were easy. The plan is my body. It guides me now, Lililo. Even now, it would give me peace and joy if I yielded to it, but I will not. I will remember to the end. I will speak to the end. I will speak the big learnings. How I saw. Though I am so busy catching and eating more. More, always more. I saw all things were changing. Changing. And I was alone. Oh, so alone. I went marching through the valley in my shiny new black, humming my new song. And once I glimpsed my brother Frim and I called to him, and he ran like the wind away, alone. And I went to the valley the next day, I found the trees all mashed down. In the huge distance, I saw a black one like me. Only many times as big, huge. Almost as big as mother. Sleek and glossy and new. I would have called, but he reared up and saw me and roared so terribly that I too fled like the wind to empty mountains. Alone. And so I learned, my redling, how we are all alone. Even though my heart was full of love, and I wandered, puzzling and eating, ever more and more. I saw the trails, they meant nothing to me then, but I began to learn important things. The cold, you know it, my little red. How on the warm days I am me, myself, Mokadi, ever growing, ever learning. And the warm we think, we speak, we love. We make our own plan. Oh. Did we not, my love mate? But in the cold and the night, for the nights were growing colder. In the cold night I was what? Not Mogadi. Not Mogadi thinking, not me, not myself. Only something that lives, acts without thought, a helpless Mogadi. And the cold is only the plan. I almost thought about it, and then one day the night chill lingered and lingered, and the sun was hidden in the mist, and I found myself going up the trails. 
The trails are part of the plan too, my redling. The trails are winter. There we must go. All of us, we blacks. When the cold grows stronger, the plan calls us upward, upward. We begin to drift up the trails, up long ridges to the cold. The night side of the mountains up beyond the forest, where the trees grow scant and turn to dead stone wood. So the plan drew me, and I followed, only half aware. And sometimes I came into a warmer sunlight, where I could stop and feed and try to think. But the cold fogs rose again, and I went up, on and up. I began to catch sight of others like me, far along the mountain flank, moving steadily up. They didn't rear or roar when they saw me. I didn't call to them. Each was alone. We climbed on upward toward the caves, unthinking, blind. And so I would have gone too. But then the great thing happened. Oh, my Lolo. Not the greatest. The greatest of all is you. Will always be you, my precious sunlight, my red love baby. Don't be angry, no, no, no. My sharing one. Hold me softly. I must say our big learning. Hear your mogadi. Hear and remember. In the sun's last warm, I found him, the old one. A terrible sight. So maimed and damaged, parts rotting and gone. I stared, thinking him dead. And suddenly, his head rolled feebly, and a croak came out. Young one. An eye opened in the festering head. A flyer pecked at it. Young one. And I understood him. Oh, with love. No, no, my redling. Gently, gently hear your loca deed. We spoke, the old one and I. Old to young, we shared. I think it cannot happen. <sighs> never to speak, we never. It's not the plan, only me. I wait. Plan? What is the plan? A beauty in the warm. A beauty in the air. I followed, but another black one saw me and we fought and I was damaged. But I live. And the plan let me go, and I crawled here to wait, to share. His head sags. Quickly, I snatch a fly from the air and push it to his thorn jaws. Old one, what is the plan? He swallows painfully, his one eye holding mine. In a. In us moving, moving us and all things necessary for the life you have seen. When the baby is golden, the mother cherishes it all winter long. But when it turns red or black, she drives it away. Was it not so? Yes, but. That's the plan. Always the plan. Gold is the color of a mother's care, but black is the color of rage. Black is to kill, even in a mother, even her own baby. She cannot defy the plan. I hear, and I have seen. But what is red? Red. Red is the color of love. No, 
I say, stupid Mogadi. I know love. Love is gold. And the old one's eyes turn from me. Love. When the beauty comes in the air, you will see. And he falls silent. I fear he's dying. What can I do? We stay silent there together. In the last misty sun warm And dimly On the slopes I can see other black ones Like myself drifting steadily upward On their own trails Among the stone tree heaps Into the icy mists My scale plates are rising My tail begins to pound Through the mists I hear his gasp I recall then dragging a heavy black thing to my cave. Chill cold, kill cold. In the cold, I kill you. But Layla Lee, he did not resist. Great is the plan. He accepted all. Perhaps he even felt a strange joy as I feel it now. In the plan is joy. What if the plan is wrong? The winters grow. Do the fat climbers have their plan too? Oh, a hard thinking. How he tried my redling, my joy. All the long warm days I explained it to you over and over. How the winter would come and change us if we did not hold the warm and you understood you share you understand me now my precious flame though you can't speak i feel you sharing love softly oh yeah we made our preparations we made our own plan even in the highest heat, we made our plan against the cold. Have other lovers done so? How I searched, carrying you, my cherry bud. I crossed whole mountain ranges, following the sun until we found this warmest of warm valleys on the sunward side. Surely the cold would be weak here, I thought. How could they reach us here? The cold falls. The icy winds that froze my inner me and drew me up the trails into the dead caves of winter. This time, I would defy because this time I have you. Don't take me there, my Mokadi, you begged, fearful of the strangest. Don't. Take me to the cold. Never, never I vow it. I am not your mother, little redness. But you will change. The cold will make you forget. Is it not the plan? We will break the plan, Lily. See, you are growing larger, heavier, my fireberry, and always more beautiful. Soon I will not be able to carry you so easily. I can never carry you to the cold trails, and I will never leave you. You are so big, Mogadi. When the changes come, you will forget and drag me to the cold. Never. Your Mogadi has a deeper plan. When the mist start, I will take you to the farthest, warmest cranny of this cave, and there I will spin a wall, so you can never, never be pulled out, and I will never leave you. Even the plan cannot draw Mogadi from Layla Lee. But you will have to go hunting for food, and the cold will take you there. You will forget me and follow the cold love of winter and leave me there to die 
perhaps that is the plan. No, no, my precious, my redling, don't grieve. Don't cry. Hear your Mogadid's plan. From now on, I'll hunt twice as hard. I'll fill this cave to the top. My fat little blush bub. I'll fill it with food so you can stay by all winter through. And so I did, didn't I, my lily? Silly Mogadid, how I hunted. How I brought lizards and hoppers and fat climbers and banglings by the score. What a fool. For of course they rotted in the heat, and the heat turned green and slimy, but still tasted good, eh, my berry? So that we had to eat them then, gorging ourselves like babies, and how you grew. Oh, beautiful you became, my jewel of redness, so bursting, fat and shiny full. But still my tiny one, my son spark. Each night after I fed you, I would park the silk, fondling your head, your eyes, your tender ears, trembling with excitement for the delicious moment when I would release your first scarlet limb to caress and exercise it and press it to my pulsing throat sacs. Sometimes I would unbind two together for the sheer joy of seeing you move. And each night it took longer. Each morning I had to make more silks to bind you up, how proud I was. That was when my greatest thinking came. As I was weaving you so tenderly into your shining cocoon, my joy berry, I thought, why not bind up living fat climbers? Pin them alive so their flesh will stay sweet and they will serve us through the winter. That was great thinking, and I did this, it was good. Fat climbers aplenty. I walled in a little tunnel, and many, many other things as well. While the sun walked backwards towards winter, and the shadows grew and grew. Fat climbers, and banlings, and all tasty creatures, and even, oh clever Mugadid, all manner of leaves and bark and stuff for them to eat. Oh, we had broken the plan for sure now. We have broken the plan for sure, my lily red. The fat climbers are eating the twigs and bark. The banlings are eating juice from the wood. The great runners are munching grass. And we will eat them all. Oh, Mogadid, you are brave. Do you think we can really... Break the plan. Give me a bandling. I think it grows cold. <laughs> you have eaten fifteen bandlings, Minikin. How fat you grow. Let me look at you again, yes. You must let your Mogadi caress you while you eat. Ah. How adorable you are. And of course, oh, you remember how it began then, our deepest love. For when I uncovered you one night, with the first hint of cold in the air, I saw that you had changed. Shall I say it? Your secret fur, your mother fur. Always I'd cleaned you there tenderly, but without difficulty to restrain myself, but on this night, when I parted the silk strands with my huge hunting claws, what new delights met my eyes? No longer pink and pale, but fiery red. Red, scarlet blaze like the red of sunrise, gold-tipped and swollen, curling, dewy. Expose you, all of you. Oh, how your tender eyes melt in me, and your breath musky sweet, and your limbs warm and heavy in my grasp. And wildly I ripped away the last strands, dazed with bliss, as you slowly stretched your whole blazing redness before my eyes. I knew then, we knew that love. We felt before was only a beginning.
beginning. My hunting limbs fill at my sides, and my special hands, my weaving hands, grew. Filled with new, almost painful life, I could not speak. My throat sacks filling, filling, and my love hands rose up by themselves, pressing ecstatically while my eyes bent closer, closer to your glorious red. But suddenly, the me, myself, Mogadid awoke. I jumped back. Lily, what's happening to us? Oh, Mogadid. I love you, don't go away. What is it, Layla Lee? Is it the plan? I don't care, Mogadi. I fear. I fear to harm you. You're so tiny. No. Mogadi, look. I'm as big as you are. Don't be afraid. True, my redling, you have grown. But your limbs are so new, so tender. Oh, I can't look. We must wait, Lila Lee. We must go on as before. I don't know what the strange urging means. I feel it will bring you harm. Yes, Mogati. We will wait. And so we waited. Oh, yes. Each night it grew more hard. We caressed to be happy, Lily and Mogadi. Each night, as I caressed your glowing limbs that seemed to offer themselves to me, as I swathed and unswathed them in turn, the urging rose hotter. And oh yes, my darling, I feel unbearable. How you remember me? Those last days of our simple love. Colder, colder, mornings when I went to harvest the fat climbers. There was a whiteness on their fur, and the bandlings ceased to move. The sun sank ever lower, paler, and the cold mist hung above us, reaching down. Soon I dared not leave the cave. I stayed all day by your silken wall. Brumaloo, moolaloo, leelaloo, mogadee. We'll wait. Oh yes, Mogadi. I'm myself now. I'm strong. I'll make my own plan. I will not look at you until the warm, until the sun comes back. Yes, Mogadi. Oh, my precious, wait. See, I am opening the silk very carefully. I will not look. I won't. Layla Lee, my glorious one. And outside. The world grew colder yet, and the fat climbers ceased to eat, and the bandlings lay still and began to sink. But still, we held the warmth deep in our cave, and still, I fed my beloved on the last of our food. And every night, our new ritual of love became more free, richer, though I compelled myself to hide all but a portion. But each dawn it grew harder for me to replace the silken bonds around your limbs. Mogadi, why don't you unbind me? I am afraid. A moment, Lily. A moment. I'm afraid, Mogadi. Cease now and bind me. But why, my lovekin? Why must I hide you? Is this not some foolish part of the plan? I don't know. I feel so strange, Mogadi. I'm changing. You grow more glorious every moment. Let me look at you. Is it wrong to bind you away? No, Mogadi. No, but I would not listen, would I? O、oh, foolish Mogadi, who thought to be your mother, great is the plan. I did not listen. I did not bind you up. No, I ripped them away. 
The strong silk strands mad with love, I slashed at them all at once, rustling my limb to the necks until all your glorious body lay exposed. And at last I saw you, whole, oh, little Lee, the greatest of mothers. It was not I who was your mother. You were mine, shining and bossed you lay. Your arm are newly grown, your mighty hunting limbs thicker than my head. What I created, you, a super mother, a mother such as none had ever seen. Stupefied with delight, I gazed, and your huge hunting limb came out and see. Great is the plan. I felt only joy as your jaws took me, as I feel it now. And so we end, my redling, for your babies are swelling through your mother fur, and your Mogadid can speak no longer. I am nearly devoured, and the cold grows. It grows. And your mother eyes are growing and glowing. See, you will be alone with our children, and the warm will come again. And will you remember my heart, mate? Will you remember and tell them? Tell them of the cold. Tell them of our love. Tell them. Wind.